This programming is brought to you by Local Video Marketing. In association with Coach Chick's Mastermind Group and CoachChick.com.
Hey there, it's Kim Lucard, Hockey Mom RD. I hope you are doing well during this crazy time. And today I'm going to show you how to use the nutrition information that you can find online to make hockey strong choices when you are going out and picking up a quick meal um, for your skater or your family. One thing that many of my skaters struggle with is how in the world to navigate the menus online. So what you see first is Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is a favorite of many of the youth ice hockey players that I work with. And I'm gonna be teaching you a simple math hack. So all you have to remember is for every 100 calories, you want to make sure there's no more than three grams of fat. So let's look at different sandwiches. So here, this Chick-fil-A sandwich, it looks like it's fried. It has 440 calories and 17 grams of total fat. Now we're always looking at total fat. So if this was a 400 calorie sandwich, using the rule that I just taught you of three grams for every 100 calories, you would want this to be right at about 12 grams total. Well, it's a little bit more than 400, so maybe you could go to 13 grams, but it wouldn't go any higher. That would make this sandwich 30% or less fat. Now, I'm not talking pre-game meals right now, I'm just talking healthy choices throughout the day. So this is a little bit higher in fat, and then, of course, you're going to want to make sure that you opt for a dry sandwich or, say, honey mustard, uh, not Chick-fil-A sauce because that's mayonnaise-based and that's going to be adding more fat. So let's go back and look at another one, which is the grilled sandwich. And you can see the difference. So the grilled chicken sandwich has only 320 calories and 6 grams of fat. So remembering that for every 100 calories, you want three grams of fat or less. You can see right here that if this was, you know, push it back down to 300, you could have nine grams of fat. So this would be a good choice for a hockey strong snack or, you know, a lunch or dinner. Now, again, you're going to have to watch the side dishes. So choose fruit and instead of French fries because French fries will add more fat. And then obviously choose a mustard or dry so that you're not adding more fat to the total fat count with the sauces like mayonnaise or a Chick-fil-A sauce. Another favorite restaurant is Subway. Now on Subway, you're going to need to go to subway.com and I clicked on menu. Then you can click on menu. Yes. And then I always recommend the fresh fit sandwiches, the six inch fresh fit sandwiches. And this will pull up a menu grid or a nutrition grid for you. And let's look at the roasted chicken sandwich so we can view it. Remembering this is the six inch sandwich. And the roasted chicken sandwich has 260 calories and only 3.5 grams of fat. One of the reasons why I recommend the Fresh Fit line is because they are lower in fat. Here again, remembering what you put on your sandwich. So if you're asking them to add cheese or you're using a mayonnaise-based mayonnaise sauce, it's gonna add fat. If you're adding chips, it's gonna add fat. So this sandwich is a good choice. 260 for 3.5 grams of fat definitely fits in that 100 calories for three grams of fat per 100 calories. You could add pretzels, you could add uh, some fresh fruit, low fat milk or water, and you've got a great meal. Let's look at another fresh fit that is a favorite. Um, let's look at the sweet onion teriyaki sandwich. So this sandwich, remembering we are, I am talking the six inches. So this is 320 calories and total grams of fat are four. So here again, it fits beautifully. You could go as high as nine grams of fat here. So I strongly recommend if you're going to Subway, take a peek at their fresh fit 
sandwiches, the six inch ones for your youth ice hockey player. And I think there's a veggie delight. That's what I wanted to look at, the veggie delight. And I don't, oh, do they, I don't see any cheese on that. This is only 190 calories and two grams of fat. So, um, and fiber is five grams of fat. So this would be a fantastic sandwich. Now for the nutrition calculator, you can click on that and you can see that it doesn't have any cheese. So let's say maybe you want some fresh mozzarella on this sandwich to add some protein and a few more calories and maybe we will add some guacamole as a spread and keeping everything uh, the way they have it. And let's reset the calorie count. And that brings us to 190 calories. Wait, I reset. Is this not working? <laughs> but it's not working. Well, those would be other options. And I don't think that adding it clicked off. Let's see, fresh mozzarella. We'll just reset the fresh mozzarella. All right, well, if you did choose the vegetarian option, you're probably going to want to add some cheese. So adding cheese and being careful not to add too much of a high fat spread would make this a good option too. Now you can add so much cheese that you push it into the option where it's not going to be 30% fat. But that's how you navigate these menus online. So you want to find the total calories. Going back here, we'll look at one more fresh fit. Going back here, let's look at the Black Forest. And so the first thing you want to find is the total calories of the sandwich or the meal that you're looking at. And you want to find the total fat. For every 100 calories, three grams of fat, and that'll mean it's 30% less fat, 30% um, fat or less per sandwich. And here again, this one fits right in. So I hope this has been helpful. If you would like to speak to me about your hockey or your youth ice hockey players' hockey performance as it relates to how they are eating, please email me at kim at hockeymomrd.com. Have a fantastic summer. This is Kim Lucard, Hockey Mom RD. Happy skating till next time. fitness package all right so I've got a red and black band and a red black band what I'm doing is I'm linking them together to go ahead and create a purple level resistance now the cool thing about this is you could go black on black red on red all right so you always have some resistance options so that's where having an economy fitness package is gonna be a lot better because it's gonna allow you to go ahead and change up your resistance that said, I'm also going to bring in the dynamic stabilizer because I'm going to engage my hips with that as well. So not only are we going to engage them with a horizontal vector, we're going to engage them with the dynamic stabilizer as well. And then we're going to create hip dominated movements for the most part to really get after your hip. Now here's the beauty of this workout. It's going to be very knee friendly because we're not going to go ahead and ask you to squat a lot. And if we do ask you to squat a lot, we're going to make sure you engage your butt by getting into a really good hip hinge before you do it. I think you're gonna find, guys, if you've got knee pain, if you've got ankle symptoms, if you've got plantar fasciitis, foot problems, and it's because of your hip weakness, all right, 
This is a great way to go ahead and challenge your hips without impacting a lot of those other areas, all right? You ready to go ahead and hit it? I hope so. Guys, if you like the video, if you like the workout, make sure you thank me. Make sure you go down, like the video, go ahead and put your comments in there. I always love hearing how you guys are doing and I wanna hear how you're enjoying the bands as you go ahead and train them. Let's go ahead and get better. Hey, good afternoon from the Sunshine State. My message today actually comes from an article I wrote for CoachChick.com. It's about a statement made years ago by the professor in my favorite college coaching course. And it's something I've never forgotten. In effect, he said, once you find yourself sitting back and admiring the way your players work at a drill. That drill has probably outlived its usefulness. Now, what was he trying to say? It's that an overused drill ultimately reaches a point where it's not inspiring any further growth. What he was also trying to say is that we coaches have to continually search the new challenges in order to keep our athletes growing.
we're going to do a little bit of a research study. I've got my photoelectric timing cells that I use for research purposes, and we're going to skate 120 feet. So myself and Chris and Nolan are going to skate in, in two different ways. We're going to do it four different times. The first time we're going to skate with that, that long recover that we've talked about. And I'm going, to, I'm going to do it, and then Chris and Nolan are going to try to do it. They have a hard time doing it because they're, they're such good skaters. So we're going to see what the differences are between the time when we skate with a, with a narrow stride, bringing the skate all the way back in, kind of that quote-unquote heel click, or bringing the skate back to the midline of the body, and then we're going to come back and time us when we skate with a wide stride. So we're going to do just kind of, you know, it's not, it's not the, the, the classic research study that we would be doing, but just to give you an idea of which one is faster and which one is slower. Then we're going to come back and we're going to, we're going to do the arm movement. So we're going to have one time where we all skate with our arms moving forward and backward, see what the time is, and then we're going to do it with our arms moving side to side, which is the normal skating movement. So we've got uh, our, our camera on us so you can see how we're skating and a camera on the time. So do you guys understand what to do? Okay. All right, I'm going to go first so these guys can see exactly how we're going to do it. We don't have to worry about the timers because they're photoelectric timers. So watch my skates, ladies and gentlemen, and see how close I am. And we're all going to skate as fast as we can, okay? Both ways, with the feet narrow and feet, feet wide. Okay, so here we go. So I stop the clock at 5.04 seconds. Okay, now we're going to watch with Chris. Now see, see the narrow stride that Chris has. See, he's bringing his skates up high and he's bringing his skates in. So Chris was 5.10. And now we're going to watch Nolan. So watch Nolan's skates. Watch how narrow, look at the narrow stride he has. Bringing his skates all the way in. Now he didn't skate all the way through, but still. He's 5.12. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to skate normal. <laughs> we're going to skate with the wide, typical wide stance, and we're going to see how fast we are and see what the difference is. Okay, guys, as fast as you can, one hand in your stick. Now just skate like you normally do, okay? Okay, we'll see what my time is. 4.75. So that's a little faster. Now let's watch Chris. See the difference in his skates? See how much more powerful he looks? 4.65. But the, the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you see how much power, more powerful it looks when they're skating. Now doesn't that look more powerful with Nolan skating? And Nolan, Nolan was the fastest four. 0.42. As I said, it's not, you know, it's not, it, it probably wouldn't pass the, the rigorous standards for the research that we usually do, but it gives you a pretty objective evidence that, that that wider stride is a much faster way of skating than bringing your skates in, bringing your skate. Go fast, go. That's it. Go, Corbin. Go. Hey, hi there, all my hockey friends. I'm sitting out on my back porch. I uh, just received this hockey gift from up north. Like every once in a while, it's like Christmas here for the old coach. But I have something special I'm excited about opening and, uh, and showing to you folks. Now, this is the time when everybody is stuck away from a rink and looking for ways to practice their stick handling, uh, passing, shooting techniques and stuff like that. And along comes something really, really neat looking. And it's uh, like a hockey sock type thing. I'll tell you more about the specifics later on, but let me get excited and open this.
plastic. Like a stick sock, huh? Pretty neat. All the neater is I can zip that right down. And let me see how I do here. Now I'm just thinking that my poor old mom never knew how all the nicks in her cabinets came about when I was like about uh, 10 or 11 years old. Because every time she and my dad would go out for errands, I'd have my stick out and I'd be, I'd be actually stick handling a baseball because I felt as though it was a closer weight to a puck. Uh, this was in the days before all the special kind of office pucks and stuff. But anyway, that's how that rascal works. Right. I think it would wear pretty well uh, on most indoor surfaces, at least. And uh, probably on a sport court, also. Um, but anyway, let me uh, let me try a black one. Huh? Whoops! There we go. Right, I'm going to try this. Because I'm an old coach, and I think like an old coach. Uh, my mind has already been racing on how I would use this from a team perspective. Um, for instance, uh, we could we could set it up so that uh, certain certain units out on the floor working out like a gym floor. Um, they, they'd all have the same color sticks, uh, one of their team colors, and the guys that were playing against would have a different, the uh, other color. There's the black, this is the black version. Had no logo on that one. Okay. But again, Wish you could feel this because that's really good material and again sturdy, but I think it would be really soft. Uh, but that's that's it for now. My understanding is you can get your team colors, you can get your own logo, team logo put on should be neat. Um, the developer of this was mentioning that uh, it's also good protection on your stick uh, when you're when you're traveling. So your blades uh, blades are always covered, and there's probably less chance of somebody walking off with your stick if it's uh, if it's identified in this way. All right, I'm. Uh, I'm out of here for now. All right, thank you. This has been a local video marketing production. We hope you've enjoyed this and that you've picked up a number of great hockey tips. Please do tell some friends about these shows and let the contributing coaches know how much you appreciate them.